everybody, this is Timothy Kim O'Brien, and you have tuned into Chemo's Den of Iniquity. Hi, uh, you just listened to DJ Vulture and his bump in and bump out music. It's fantastic music, folks. There's a CD on sale somewhere. I can tell you, I could tell you where, but we don't want to uh, encourage his uh, very uh, and many habits that he has. I mean, we've just got him out of the bathtub. And he's sleeping on my uh, fold-out sofa. So we've come a long, long way. And we've got a nice Patreon account for him all set up and good to go. So folks, give to the Patreon account. Don't buy his CD when you see him, you know, walking around in the car, uh, you know, in the parking lot. Because that's just no good, folks. That's just not going to lead to a good path. Anyhow, today, folks, um, we have a special guest here with us. Um, she is a painter, uh, an extraordinary painter. Um uh, I love her work. She likes my work. She thinks I don't paint like a four-year-old on crack. Sometimes I do. Um, sometimes I feel like a four-year-old on crack painting, but that's okay. Uh, we have my good friend here, Heather Moon. Heather, how are you doing today? Not bad, thanks. Excellent. So, uh, Heather, I'd like to you know start the show off with letting everybody know how long we've known each other and um, you know kind of where we uh, where our paths cross. So it's been. Gosh, I want to say uh, 2005, 2006. I that think. sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. We've known each other in the wonderful, wonderful metropolis, the sprawling metropolis of Rockford, Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I had uh, Anessa Ferris on uh, episode number uh, three, and uh, she uh, forbade me to call it the, uh, uh, the murder capital of the world. So, uh, uh, I, Go ahead. <laughs> and you're okay with that okay good deal. yeah i'm Excellent. still here man <laughs> <laughs> so um we've known each other for that amount of time uh, i've always known you as a painter you're in all the art forms but uh primarily i've known you as a uh, as a painter uh in that time uh myself um i'm an admirer of painting and all that uh, but let's let's uh, dig in uh, a little bit to you. Let's uh, do the uh, world famous. And, you know, you can sit on the couch if you want to and tell me all about your childhood. But uh, where did you start? Where did you uh, pick up uh, painting? Um, I've been doing it for as long as I can remember. Um, both of my parents were artists, and my family has been artists for generations and generations, like as far back as you can look. So. I was kind of born into it and it was just part of day-to-day -day life as a kid. Like it was just natural. That's what we were all doing. So it's uh, one of those things that it was just kind of uh, uh, an instinct for you to go ahead and, uh, and do painting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause my mom, I'd be a little kid. My mom would have her easel set up and she'd be painting and stuff. So I told her I wanted to try it too. So I'd be by her side with my little easel and my little canvas and <laughs> my little paints. So yeah. Hey, that's the way to do it. I mean, my, my girls, that's kind of what we do is uh, we uh, bust out the markers and the crayons and uh, and go to town on that and see wonderful things happen. So there you go. Excellent. So um, starting when you're a kid, um, how has that uh, progressed for you? Let's let's go from uh, kid to, oh, about uh, millennia to 2006 before we uh, before we met up. Okay. Okay. Um yeah, so I did my first art show um, when I was in high school. I showed with my parents, and um, it was in a art shop window. So they would switch the window out every month. So it was super cool to drive down the main drag and see your art in the in the window there as you go by. Mm -hmm. And then um, in high school, my senior year, there was um, an art scholarship that was available, and you had to audition for it. So you had to have a portfolio and everything like that. So um, I, I got that all put together and I ended up getting it. So um, I was able to go to art school from there in college. Mm -hmm. And um, that scholarship paid for most of that. And that's kind of where I started refining things and finding the type of subject matter I like to work with and um, the type of style I like to work with. So that kind of got me through the early 2000s. And uh, Rockford is a, a huge art mecca, isn't it? Even more so now. Like, it really is a thing here. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm always kind of shocked because I know when I was in, uh, in middle school and high school, um, I didn't really, uh, wasn't really in the scene out there. And then after I came back uh, from the Air Force, 
um, and then uh, came back from uh, my uh, master's program in uh, Virginia, I was like, wow, this town has really turned it around. So, you know, I'm, I'm used to it from uh, the late 80s, early 90s being kind of a, a desert and then um, switching it up into the early 2000s uh, where I was, I was really shocked at, uh, at, at and what has happened. Why do you think that is? Do you, is it is it uh, you, is it you have better artists there? You have uh, a better audience there. Why, why do you think that is? I think it's just the city for for all that's wrong with it. One of the things that's right with it is there's like a lot of support for small and local, like even like small local shops thrive here, mm-hmm. as opposed to other places that's just full of strip malls. So. Um, you know, word gets around and people have decided to be more supportive of each other as opposed to competitive. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, it's in the Rockford Area Arts Council is very, very supportive of the arts community here and everything like that. They really do a lot for people. Mm-hmm. Um, and then just new groups have formed like and and things like that. It's just like really a lot of support and less competition. When it, I know in a, even in the 90s, um, there it was very clicky oh, like yeah. you had to be one of the cool kids and stuff like that and there was like the group of artists but now there's so so many of them they're just everywhere you look yeah yeah i remember in the 90s uh cafe uh, esperanto uh, yeah <laughs> oh my god you know i'm not I, I don't know if they're still open or I, I think they're closed i think they got their little art shop still open i don't know but uh that they opened the cafe back up up there so. they did oh yeah. i'm coming for a visit let's go <laughs> we'll go and knock out some rum and cokes and I'll start smoking cigarettes again. But yeah. clove cigarettes, not you know, not not oh, anything of else. Of course. Of course. <laughs> well no, I, I remember that scene and oh my god, it was clicky and uh you know, I, I'd read my poetry there and, and and all that jazz and uh it was just yeah, I, you had to uh, know somebody to, you know, e- even do a poetry reading there. Um yep. it, it was it was just ridiculous how snotty they were and they're only 90 miles outside of chicago yeah they don't really have a right to be that snotty um but now you know i'm I'm looking back at home and going wow it, it's a pretty nice scene how how important is that for you as an artist uh to have a good supportive scene like that do you, do you find it that your work is better now or was it better when you had to struggle and fight and scratch and claw no, I think it's better now because I'm surrounded with supportive people who give me their honest critique of my work. And um, that's so much more helpful than a couple people here and there seeing it once in a while saying, oh, that's nice, you know. Right. And um, yeah, it's just having that. And it was so hard to get into a show before. Just so hard because you had to know people. You had to know the right people. You had to be their friend. They had to like you. So now it's like you you can totally find the group that fits your personality and your style without a problem. Absolutely. I remember um, speaking about, you know, knowing somebody and getting into a show. Um, we actually did a show together. Folks, it's we amazing. We sure did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, oh, God, what was it titled? Chemo and the Moon Together Again or some, some crazy like Oh, I can't like remember. That. We had a good name, though. It was yeah. a good name. And, um, you know, it, my stuff, it's up on Redbubble. Anyone can go check it out. Um, uh, and, you know, if you buy something, I'll come to your house and sign it and kiss you or something like that. <laughs> um, but it, my stuff, you know, I, I'm not classically trained. Um, I just, you know, I, I, I paint more by emotion myself. Um, and I go for, more for the avant-garde just because I can't do form too well. But I remember we did that show um at the uh oh gosh what was that place called phoenix traders phoenix traders there we go yeah phoenix traders folks not sponsoring my show i don't know why <laughs> but they are not a sponsor of my show much like little fish comic books here in fredericksburg again not sponsoring my show <laughs> amazon not sponsoring my show what's up with that anyhow but yeah phoenix traders great little place there um great local place uh, and great owners there, and you know they. It was uh, for a. Uh, what was it for? It was. Uh, it was a, yeah. Okay, that's right. Yeah, art scene. That's right. And that's still going on, correct? Oh yeah, okay. twice a year. So can you tell uh, the folks out there because not everybody's from Rockford. Uh, that's in the audience. We know that. 
Um, there's about 20 Rock 40 in that are listening to this podcast, but what is art scene for those of us that don't live in Rockford? Well, it's basically, they do it in spring and the fall, so it's like April and October, but um, a lot of the city becomes an art gallery, like businesses and things like that that aren't normally art galleries become art galleries. So there's just shows all over the place all weekend long, and you can you can find whatever you want. You know, there's people doing jewelry, there's paintings, there's photography, all kinds of stuff. It's just really, really cool. It's like the biggest event of the year, really. That is very cool because I know when uh, we uh, were at Phoenix Traders, uh, they didn't charge me anything. I don't know if they charged you, uh, but they didn't charge me anything to put up <laughs> my work. Uh, no. And, uh, you know, I, it, did I sell anything? No, but it felt good to just get my work out there um, and get it to looked at by somebody. And it was great that I had a great friend like you that went with me and got it all set up. And, yeah. Uh, and you showed me, you know, how to how to, how to do it uh, correctly. And because yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm a theater guy, but I've never been shown how to correctly place things on a wall and to kind of make a uh, either make a statement or make a uh, make, make art out of your art while you know while displaying it. Yeah, and it was cool that the owners of Phoenix Traders like bent over backwards and like took all the merchandise off the wall and everything for us. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. That is true. I mean, they probably could have made a, a ton more money doing something else, but they had a lot of. I remember that night they had a lot of foot traffic coming in. People were yeah. really appreciative of it. So, absolutely. That brings us up to you know our two thousand. That brings us up to two thousand and six in our wayback machine. <laughs> <laughs> so let's uh push a little uh, farther ahead shall we and um let's uh talk about what you've been doing lately in the uh, rockford scene um and where can we see some of your work so let's first talk about what are you doing right now um i'm currently working on some paintings getting ready for art scene um i've got a series of totem poles i'm working on um they aren't totem poles in your traditional sense but they are to me mm -hmm. um so I'm working on a series of those. Eventually, there's going to be between four and six of them. Nice. And then I'm working on a mandala that's like three feet by three feet. Mm -hmm. And that one's almost done. So it'll be good to get that one out of the way. It's been agonizing working on that thing. Um, yeah, I'm basically just kind of planning out what we're going to do this year for, for art scene and everything. We always try to shake things up a bit and... I'm not one to, I try not to put the same show on every time. So I really right. don't like doing that. It was like when we were doing poetry, it was like, I didn't like to reread something I already read. So exactly. exactly. Yeah. Where can we find uh, your stuff on the internet? I mean, if we want to, I mean, obviously not everyone lives in Rockford, but if somebody wants to reach out and uh, get in contact with you, um, where can they go to find that? Um, I have a Facebook page called Viking Moon. Mm -hmm and um artworks on there and i believe there's a link on that to the square marketplace page where you can order things if you want to um you could pay with credit card right on the site there and um, eventually i'm going to have some prints available i'm trying to finish these paintings i'm currently working on so that i can get prints going so those should be available at some point in the future too for uh, some of our listeners out there, um, and, and this whole podcast is directed uh, more towards people that are um, a little bit intimidated uh, to, to try art, um, but let's say you got Joe Blow uh, walking through the gallery, and um, how do you like to be approached as an artist? I mean, just be genuine. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm open to talking to anybody about anything as long as they're genuine. You know, if I don't... don't say something to me with an ulterior motive or something you know or be creepy but um mm -hmm. yeah if you have genuine questions i do my best to answer or talk to people and i've had people ask me if i could draw a tattoo for them i've had people ask me if i could teach them to paint mm -hmm. and things like that you know i'm open to talking about whatever like that and folks just so that you know out there i've never asked heather to uh, teach me how to paint i am <laughs> not a student of hers so <laughs> if if you look at my work and go, oh my God, you know this is how she teaches how to paint. No, 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 no. Um, the the person that taught me how to paint like that um, is a good dear friend of ours, uh, Bob Ross. He taught me how to paint the way I paint. 
Awesome. <laughs> Gotta love Bob. <laughs> Well, some people have called me the Bob Ross of podcasting. I don't see it. I don't have the fuzzy hair. I'm, you know, a receding hairline, but who knows? Well, your voice is soothing. You know, and, 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 and since it's healed from my surgery, it's a lot more soothing. It was uh, sounding uh, pretty rough uh, a couple episodes ago, let me tell you. <laughs> That's all right. Overall, we know it's not really like that all the time. Not all the time, but I was getting worried because my girls were like Papa with a funny voice, and I was thinking, oh my God, that's what they're going to know me as when they're 18. And they're going to, you know. <laughs> my dad is worse than Tom Waits. <laughs> no, no, I don't think that's possible. <laughs> I don't think so either. I, you know, I've drank enough battery acid. I, I can't get my <laughs> voice like that. I, you know. Yeah, that's hard to do. <laughs> that is hard to do. That is very hard to do. All right, so. How can, um, what is a good way for somebody to uh, get into uh, uh, get into painting and then uh, get into, because we, we were talking about, we're talking Bob Ross here, which we giggle at, but a lot of people, they start off with Bob Ross. Uh, what's a good way for somebody to get started uh, in painting? I'm telling you, Bob Ross is awesome. He has some great techniques that are awesome and they work and it's, it's kind of magical when you can create something like that using the stuff he does. He really simplifies it. Um, but a lot of cities now, like the hot thing is those painting parties where um, you go with some friends. There may be some wine involved, whatever, and everybody's painting together. Um, and it helps because the person that's teaching it is usually an artist, so they can help you with stuff, like help, help your eye a little bit and help you fix some things. So it's good to have somebody there initially to help you but then if you want to go bob ross or you want to go youtube whatever you want to do you know it's it's a whole world out there well and i actually have youtube bob ross you can youtube them uh and see a, a ton of his episodes um uh, and i play that for my girls it's very soothing for them but, yeah uh, i played it and i had my uh, stepson uh watching it too and he was like, man, I think I could paint. And I'm like, let me go ahead and get you some oils and some paint brushes and some canvases and let's go. You know, go ahead. Yep. So um, we, we may have another uh, painter in the family. Oh, God. <laughs> We're just hoping that we can get him to college and get him a good day job so that way he can do what I do and paint at night and do all my art at night. Yeah, you got to have a backup. You can really, It's really hard to rely on it for yeah. a living. <laughs> Absolutely. And let's talk about that for a minute. So, uh, you know, somebody, uh, you know, uh, is looking at a piece of artwork. Uh, now, I know here in Fredericksburg, where I'm at, we have what's called First Fridays, where all the galleries open up. There's actually a trolley. And I know you want to come visit me and hop on this trolley. Um, I do. That goes to all the uh, all the uh, galleries that are open uh, for the uh, First Friday. And, um, and uh, you know, you, you see some uh, paintings on the wall there. Now, I've seen, you know, prices in uh, Rockford, Chicago, Fredericksburg, um, D.C., and the prices are kind of, some of them are kind of wild. I've, I've seen um, little, I don't know, uh, four by fives, and the artist is asking, you know, $700 for it. Yeah. Um, how, how, how does that break down uh, price-wise? You know, why is some of this so expensive uh, or considered expensive? You know, can you kind of break that down uh, for the average Joe that doesn't really understand, you know, how much paint costs, how much you know, supplies cost? Yeah. And, you know, it, the thing with pricing art, it's it's the hardest part about the whole thing. Um, I still to this day don't know what to price my art at. So <laughs> it's, you know, and with some people, they price stuff super, super high because of ego issues. Um, but kind of you're supposed to, it's supposed to be based on the size of the piece and the cost of the materials used. So um, oil paint can be pretty expensive if you want good oil paint. Um, you know, there's the cheap generic brands at Michael's that are going to be totally transparent um, and not give you great color and things like that. So it's worth it to spend extra and use the more expensive materials. Um, yeah, it depends on the quality of the canvas. Again, there's different qualities um, of canvas. Some are less likely to warp than others. So yeah, it, it all just depends. It's like 
yeah, it depends how much time went into it. Like if something took months and months and months to create, it's going to cost more. But that's why a lot of artists have prints so that it makes things more accessible. You don't always have to buy an original. Gotcha. And, and that's, uh, you know, when, when folks are out there looking at, uh, at the galleries and looking at the prices, you got to remember, all right, you know, uh, a, a chunk of that is going for just the raw materials to do this. But, you know, it, for you, um, average painting for you, how long does that take you to do? Yeah. Um, if I'm like, if I have a real clear vision and things are going as planned, usually it would take three, four months. Um, to finish one, if it's like a one foot by three foot, this mandala is, um, <laughs> I think I started it in like October. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's still not done. Um, it, it, yeah, it all kind of de just depends how well it's going and what the weather's like too. So if it's, if it's really humid and stuff, because I work with oils, like it takes a lot longer for them to dry. But right now, if I'm mixing stuff into them to make them dry, it'll dry overnight. So I can keep going. Yeah. So it, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but yeah, about, about three, four months is about average. And now when you're saying three or four months, you're not talking, you're working straight 24 uh, seven around the clock for three or four months. You're talking, doing a couple hours here, a couple hours there a day, you know? Well, sometimes I got, um, I can spend like about 16, to 20 hours a week on a piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll have days I have off work and I'll spend the whole day working. And do you do just like uh, one piece at a time or are you working multiple pieces at a time because you have multiple visions going on? That depends too. Right now I am working on two because I had multiple visions, but then I'll go through dry spells where I've got nothing. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, I'm doing that myself. I've uh, got um, the photograph and I've got the, uh, the uh, pencil drawing on my canvas, um, but I don't have a drop of paint on the canvas. And I, I have until June the 10th to get this bad boy done because it's going to be my daughter's uh, birthday gift. Oh, yeah. yeah. You've got time. I do have time. I just, uh, you know, I've got a podcast to do. I've got marketing and promotion to do. I've got, well, you know what? I might have a furlough, so I could be off work for a few weeks. I'll have there time. you go. There <laughs> I'll have no excuse. I'll be up at three in the morning painting uh, painting my daughters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As well I should because they are gorgeous. I'm just saying. They are. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> All right. So are you sitting down? Yes. Are you ready for the Satanic Seven questions? Sure. Sure? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, just in case this is the first time listener coming in here, let's talk about the Satanic Seven questions. Now, Heather, have you seen these questions? Yes. Okay, fantastic. You're supposed to lie and say, no, no, I haven't. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll edit you want me to say out. that again? Yeah, okay. we'll edit no. that out. <laughs> I've not seen a thing. <laughs> Good deal. <laughs> Well, what happens here, folks, is uh, we're going to ask Heather seven questions here. She is going to get scored on them, so she will get points uh, for them. Now, we have had per people uh, score perfect. We've had people score more than perfect. Um, how the uh, point system is determined is um, we do a live feed right to Twitter, and everybody that listens to it shoots me a score, but they're seeing it 20 years in the future, and then they shoot me an email back. I don't know how it works. It just, trust me, the point system works perfectly every time. <laughs> every okay. Time. You can trust me on that. I have a face that you can trust. <laughs> and uh, just to let everybody know, back in episode number one, I took the test myself. I created the questions. I only got three right. Wow. I know. They're not easy questions. They are not. If you think the questions I've been asking you so far are like softball questions, oh, you got no. Oh, you, you, you got another thing coming. So. Um, I feel like a lot of pressure. There is a lot of pressure on this. I like the uh, the uh, the free world is at stake here. Is that oh stake? no! The <laughs> the uh, the uh, the art reputation of Rockford is at stake here for you. Okay. Oh man, I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Hey, I I used to have the weight of that uh, on my shoulders too with the poetry reading. So uh, you can do it. You got <laughs> okay. it. Okay. You'll survive. All right. All right. Here we go. Question number no, uh, question number one. Is the artistic life lonely 
and what do you do to counteract that loneliness? Um, yeah, it kind of is. It's a very internal process. And um, I guess to counteract it, I, uh, I try to leave my house once in a while. And um, I do have a small menagerie going in the house, too, because I prefer the company of animals to people. And, and now you have a reason to leave Rockford on a Friday and come over to Fredericksburg to do the, uh, but it's only on the first Friday. Okay, All I right. will remember that. And you can bring the menagerie of animals as well because I have two cats, so. Okay, you'll yeah, be, it'll be perfect. <laughs> I'm actually watching a third cat until tomorrow. Um, and they're all female cats, so. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, a lot of estrogen at my house. Yeah. Yeah. Did I happen to mention I have a wife and two girls and three female cats? Yeah, a lot of estrogen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting in my quote-unquote man cave. They let me have a, a, a corner office here, so. Oh, is it a closet? Um, no, I came out of the closet a long time ago. Oh, no, I mean, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to give you a full point on that one. So you got one right out of seven so far. You're doing good. You're doing yeah. good. You got to get two more to tie me. Okay. All right, and anything over two more, you're going to beat me. So um, okay, I uh, I haven't gotten anyone to score less than three. So okay. <laughs> so you're already you're you're a third of the way there. I feel you can do it. Okay. Question number two. What is the question you are always asked that you dislike, and why do you hate that question? Um, the question is, where did you get that idea mm. in, in regard to my artwork? I hate that question because I don't know where I got the idea. It just pops in my head all of a sudden, so I don't know how to answer that question. I'm going to have to give you a half point for that one. Oh. I'm going to have to give you a half a point for that one. That was, oh, man. That was a little weak, a little weak. Okay. Oh. You, know, little, you, you can always you know, come up with some, you know, uh, like uh, some uh, chemical formula that they're not <laughs> going to know. And you can go, well, if you mix this and this and that and that and this and that together, and then you inhale it thusly, you can get okay. the same ideas too. You know. All right. Oh, but uh, that's okay. You got a half point. Okay. You're one and a half. You're halfway home. You're halfway okay. home. Okay. Okay. Question number three Are there people you don't tell you're an, uh, that you're an artist? And if you don't tell them, is that wrong or bad that uh, you're concealing that you're an artist to some people? Um, yeah, I don't tell cashiers um, for the most part. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's mostly cashiers but and the mailman just because there's really no need to. Mm -hmm. I, suppose it's, uh, I suppose it's not a good thing and I should just run around the city blabbing it everywhere <laughs> like I mean, it would make an interesting trip to Walgreens to just start blabbing this stuff in the cashier's face. Mm -hmm. She asked for my Walgreens card, and I'm like, did you know? Yeah, it'd be much more interesting that way. I, I, I'm sensing a road trip and, and, and a live remote <laughs> podcast very near in your future. I'm sensing it. <laughs> okay. I like that answer. I'm going to give you the full point. you got two and a half yes. points. All right. I, I like how you worked the Walgreens cashier into it as well. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we we have Walgreens and CVS up here, and they you know they always ask me for my card, and they give them my phone number, and I'm like, and if you call it, just you know, and my wife answers, just say you're from uh, CVS or from work, okay? That'll be between us, you know. <laughs> you gotta screw the cashiers a little bit. You gotta make their life fun, right? Yeah, because it's all repetition. It it really is. It really is. All right, so we're at two and a half out of uh, three questions. Not bad, not bad. Okay. All right, question number four. Ooh, do you want an easy one or a hard one? <laughs> Let's go with easy. Easy? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to knock you a half point just for that then. No, oh, I'm man. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. How do you reach out to those who don't consider themselves an artist and is everyone an artist or does everyone have artistic ability? So this is like a multiple, big, huge honking question, but it's an easy question, yeah. I think. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't necessarily reach out to people who don't consider themselves artists, but I do think that creativity is human nature. Mm -hmm. um, it might not be putting paint on a canvas, but there's people that can cook. There's people that can disassemble a car and then put it back together. 
You know, everybody's got something they can do that's creative. It just might not be making a picture. Mm -hmm. Did I miss any part of that question? Like um, the, the aspect of it? No, you got it all. You hit you hit all, <laughs> all right. three parts of that. Okay. All and, right. A, and C would have also been the correct answer too. Oh. But no, no, okay. you got the point. You got the point. So you're at three and a half. So you've beaten me. Okay. You, you've done better than me on my own uh, on my own questionnaire. <laughs> okay. You know, and, and one of these days, somebody's going to come on the show and explain to me how that is possible because I still don't understand. Yeah, my brain doesn't work that way, so I can't tell you. That's okay. That's you know, I I know one of our listeners is going to email me at kdoipodcasting at gmail dot com and shoot me that answer, and the first person that does gets a free T shirt. So there you go. Yeah. I'm just saying a free T shirt. What what other podcast you're going to listen to that's going to give you a free T shirt for telling the host? why he only got three questions right on his own questionnaire you know exactly it's easy it's easy and, and and show your work you know just that's all i'm asking show your work make it interesting i'll read it on the air done and done <laughs> all right so you got three and a half questions right out of four not bad at all not bad at all we're going to give you okay. the hard question now oh okay you know as we get as we get closer to the end the questions get harder great so question uh number five okay um, do you have pen and paper handy? Um, sure, yes. Okay, here we go. Okay. What is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? And if possible, show your work. Um, C. Is that your final answer? It is. Wrong. Oh. So, sorry, I can't give it to you. Uh, uh, airspeed on. velocity of an unladen swallow. Yeah, Do you C. know where that comes from? No. <laughs> Can you, you can't tell me the movie that comes from? No. Monty Python's Holy Grail? It's been, I haven't seen that since I was like 16. Okay, so Road Trip is in order. Road Trip, yeah. is, either you come here or I go there. Um, I know. But I've got Holy Grail, um, and you're going to watch it. Okay, all right, that's okay. That's all right. That's okay. all right. Okay. You, you're, you know, out of five questions, you got, uh, what, four and a half? So yes. You're good. You're good. All right. <laughs> all right. Question number six. Okay. Another hard question. Mm. There, there is some math involved in this one. There okay. Is some math. Okay. If you get this one wrong, I'm going to cry. Okay. I'm going to cry. If you throw yourself at the ground and miss, what are you doing, and how do you continue to accomplish the seemingly impossible task? Throwing yourself at the ground and missing. Okay. Um, I'm following your lead. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Throwing yourself at the ground and missing. That doesn't <laughs> ring any bells for you? It does. That's why I said I'm following your lead. <laughs> You're following my lead. Yeah, I'm just doing what you do. Because that's what you do. Okay, I'm lost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what am I do? What am I doing? Um, do you not have a book by that title? Well, yes, I do. Yes, so I'm just following the rules of the book. Oh, oh, very good. Get okay. Fan, following the lead. Fan. Ah, there you You know, two points right there, Don. All you right. You mentioned my book. Two points I right did. there. Oh, my God. And, folks, you can get that book on lulu.com. <laughs> yeah, it's a great book. It's, it teaches you all you need to know about life. There you go. And, and, you know, if you come back with a 42, you're set. You're all good to go. Yep. All right. So uh, five and a half, six and a half points. Oh, my God. You're, you're, you're a half point away from perfection. Cool. Can you believe it? You were, you were, <laughs> you were looking like you weren't going to get a perfect score. You're at six and a half right now, and you've got one question to go. Okay. One question. Okay. All right. Some people think this is the toughest question. Some people think this is the easiest question. All right. Okay. I got this question wrong. Oh. And, yeah, uh -huh. I know. I'm just something I thought it up too. How could I get it wrong? But you right. can get this one wrong. Okay. All right. So if money is no object and time is no concern, um, resources are unlimited, what project would you attempt? And if I remove all negative factors, would you uh, allow this to be known as your only work? So this is what I call the magic wand question. I'm, you do a project, I'm removing every barrier that could possibly be there. So you can okay. do anything you want to do. Okay. And then the second part of that is, 
do you want this to be the only work you are known by? Okay. I would do a huge mural that would make people finally see reason upon seeing it. Um, there would be no more Jesus. There, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, politically, um, things would start to make sense again. Just upon seeing it, everything would make sense to everybody and everybody would be cool and cut all this crap out that divides people. And I would be happy to have that be the only thing I was known for. That would be delightful. So basically you're going to do a John Lennon, The White Album. Yeah, yeah, except it's going to stick. Like okay. this is going to be the go-to thing. And who's going to be the Yoko Ono? I'm I don't not, need Yoko. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not being Yoko Ono. I'm just telling you that right now. Yeah, I don't need no Yoko. Okay. All right. Maybe a month ago, two months ago, when my throat was all messed up, I could have, you know, done the, uh, you know, the crazy singing, but I can't do that now. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm going to give you the point for that, and guess what? What? You just got over perfection. Seven and a oh. half out of seven. Yes. There you go. My now, life is complete. You know, it, you, you're done. You, whatever, you, whatever you do from here on out is just going to be icing on the cake. That's all it yeah. is. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> you can take this to your friends. You can take this to the people that buy your artwork and go, hey, I got seven and a half on Chemo's Den of Iniquity on his uh, Satanic Seven Questions. What did you get? Oh, you haven't right. been asked these questions? You got nothing. Yep, you you should just go home at there this point. Go. There you go. So, you know, when you go out and, uh, you know, do the uh, do your next gallery and, and all that jazz, just let them know, hey, I got seven and a half out of seven uh, on Chemo's Den of Iniquity. And, uh, you know, the heck with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's going to be my byline on my business card. There we go. There we go. And you know what? I could even help you design that business card too. I'll put I'll put a big seven and a half on the back of it. <laughs> yes. There you go. <laughs> and when people ask, you just go, hey, listen to this podcast on this date. Boom. This episode. Rock it out. Make it happen. Good deal. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Heather, I definitely want to thank you for uh, coming and talking with us here today. It, uh, as always, it has been a pleasure um, uh, to have you on, on the show. And um you're going to come back in season two and we're going to talk about that mural that you're painting that huge oh, yeah. mural that's going to cause world peace yep exactly and we're going to it's see how, how far you got on it what kind of uh what kind of paint you're using what kind of canvas and, and brushes and we'll, we'll talk the whole thing so uh folks see us uh season two when uh you know heather does uh create world peace for the rest of us yeah <laughs> is there any thoughts you'd like to uh, share with uh, with our uh, with our audience here about creating more than you consume? Yeah, just keep at it every day. Whatever it is that you do, keep at it. It keeps you sane, and then you're able to give more of yourself to others. Perfect. I couldn't have said it better myself. Heather, thank you so much uh, again for joining us, folks. Go search out Heather's work. It's fantastic. If you're in the Rockford area. Um, go uh, knock out the galleries. Uh, go go everywhere. You know, go to go to Walgreens and demand to have her pictures shown at Walgreens. Okay? <laughs> Talk to the cashiers; they can hook you up. They say they can't. They say it's a manager thing. The cashiers can hook you up. Okay. Yep. There we go. You heard it from Heather. You heard it from me. Go to Walgreens. Make it happen. Walgreens not sponsoring this show. I think <laughs> right. they need to. They need to be hanging your pictures and sponsor the show. We'll, yep. we'll, we'll get on that next week, I promise. <laughs> All right. Again, thank you, Heather, so much. And everyone, uh, we will see you in two weeks. Bye.